the title of the presentation is the implementation of nurse initiated ankle and foot x-rays in an urgent care setting this is um, looking at nurse initiated protocols have been found to be beneficial in emergency department settings they have a positive impact on patient wait times length of stay patient satisfaction scores and staff satisfaction the purpose of this doctor of nursing practice project was to determine if nurses in an urgent care setting can accurately use nurse initiated protocols also to determine if they can increase nurse satisfaction provider satisfaction and decrease patient length of stay graduate doctor of nursing practice students presenting today are Der Zhang and Allison Yuset Giles. Advisor is Dr. Jenny Prochnow. All right, and again, I'd like to thank all you guys for being here. Um, so yes, our um, DMP project is called the Implementation of Nurse Initiative Protocols in an Urgent Care Setting. So as uh, stated before, I'll just uh, talk about a little history, which um, Sarah talked about earlier. Uh, currently, there is overcrowding and long wait times uh, that are prevalent in um, prevalent problems in healthcare facilities across the United States. So nurse initiative protocols, which I will be referring them to as NIPS, they target certain patient presenting complaints, and they are a workflow process improvement presented in the literature. So NIPS have been found to be beneficial in emergency, emergency department settings, and they have a positive impact, again, on patients' wait times, uh, length of stay, patient satisfaction scores, and the staff satisfaction also. So a little bit of background about this is that uh, the purpose of this project was to examine the impact of the uh, Okay, so yes, the purpose of this project was to examine the impact of the implementation and evaluation of the NIPS in one urgent care setting, which was uh, resided over at the Coon Rapids Aligner Urgent Care Site. And a PICO question, which was formulated uh, to explore the use of NIPS at this site, as what Sarah stated earlier, can nurses in ambulatory care setting accurately use nurse initiative protocols, such as ankle and foot radiographic tests for orthopedic injuries as compared to current practice, increase nurse provider satisfaction, and decrease patient's length of stay. So during our research phase, uh, we discover some common themes regarding the NIPS after reviewing the literature. So the common underlying themes include wait times where NIPS can decrease the time patients spent waiting for services and can reduce patients length of stay. And so for and also for patient satisfaction scores, which was proven to have a positive impact on patient satisfaction. And the third theme was staff satisfaction, where nurses reported increased job satisfaction and increased sense of autonomy. Both nurses and physicians thought NIPS, thought, uh, NIPS brought benefits to the department. And the last theme is the accuracy of NIPS. It actually showed a decreased number of x-ray ordered while maintaining or increasing the number of fracture detected. So the helping art of clinical model, uh, that was developed by Ernestine Weidenbach. It directed us in creating this project. And the purpose of this model was to allow nurses to effectively utilize their nursing role to improve patients' health. Her focus is that nurses should act towards the clinical problem and find what benefits the patients the most. So the four key concepts incorporated into this model are an individual's uh, nurse's philosophy and purpose and art of nursing and how it was all utilized into their practice. So the Iowa model of evidence-based practice to promote quality care was used to guide the implementation process of this project. Due to the lack of high levels of evidence and literature regarding this topic, uh, this model uh, was selected and it can be used for practice changes that's based on research from lower levels of evidence. So two NIPs were implemented this past May at the Coon Rapids Urgent Care site and our implementation period lasted for 12 weeks close to the end of August from 2019. And uh, the protocols utilized during this period included the nurse initiated 
x-ray uh, protocol for ankle injuries and a nurse initiated x-ray protocol for foot injuries. And the protocols, we created these protocols based on the Ottawa ankle rules. And this ankle rule has a high sensitivity and uh, specificity. It is highly used among providers in the emergency department and in clinical settings also. And um, even in the cities here, we see some nurses uh, who are in the emergency department using it before they triage patients back into the um, uh, emergency department room. So, um, this Ottawa angle rule is, is highly recognized, so which is why we decided to uh, base it on this. So we started the project off by educating the nurses on the protocol. So nurses had an individual education session with the project leads. So education sessions included verbal description of the protocols. Uh, we did YouTube video demonstrations. Uh, we had little mannequins where we demonstrated the protocols on and we just kind of practiced on each other. And the education was also provided on the required documentation in the electronic health record, EHR, and uh, by using the smart phrases that staff uh, were required to download and use when initiating the NIPS. So on this PowerPoint here, you'll see on the side, those are the smart phrases that they needed to download. And then uh, after all of this, they had to take a eight question pulse test after the session and they must score at least 80% or higher. So a nurses who score less than that, they were either walk through the test again until they achieve an 80% or higher. Uh, we just really wanted them to really understand how to use these protocols and be kind of confident in it, confident in it before going live. So one of the first outcome measure is the uh, accurate use of NIPS by nursing staff. And it was determined by nurses documentation in the EHR to see how well it reflects the protocol use. And the second outcome measured is the nurse and provider satisfaction. And they were email uh, surveys and uh, these surveys had questions based on a five point Likert scale. And the third outcome measured patient's length of stay, uh, where it was determined by the AHR, which incorporates a timestamp tab when the patient checks into the urgent care and when the provider prints their discharge ABS paperwork. So when analyzing nurse accuracy, uh, data were summarized in two tables, which kind of helped us compare information from the nurse's notes and the provider's order and the patient's imaging status, just to determine how well nurses were using the protocols. And for the length of stay, uh, the length of stay for all adult patients who received ankle or foot x-rays who met the protocol criteria was analyzed. And uh, a t-test assuming unequal variances was determined whether patients length of stay differ across the x-rays ordered by the nurses versus the x-rays that were ordered by the healthcare providers. And the statistical significance was determined at a 0 0.05 level. And uh, for the nurse and healthcare provider satisfaction, it was analyzed through the surveys that we emailed out and we used the simple descriptive calculation to determine the satisfaction score. So um, on the results for the nurse accuracy, there were 170 x-rays performed on x-rays seen for ankle and foot injuries from, the, from May to August 2019. And 94 patients with ankle or foot injuries were excluded based on the protocol criteria. Uh, they either sustained the injury more than seven days, uh, they had more than uh, one complaint, uh, they were be coming in with complaints of an ankle and foot injury, or they will have complaints other, other, other where, anywhere else, like my head, my shoulders. So, th so they were excluded. And some of them presented with no, bone, with no bone tenderness. So of these 94 patients that were excluded, zero x-rays were ordered by the nurse. And a missed opportunity is a patient who fits the ankle and foot protocol, but the nurse did not document it anywhere in the EHR as to why an x-ray was ordered. So of the 26 x-rays ordered by the nursing staff, two were positive for a fracture. And there was actually one x-ray that was ordered inappropriately by a nurse. Uh, there was no documentation of the smart phrase or where the patient had bone tenderness. So there was no evidence of that. And there was one additional x-ray that was ordered by a provider on a patient who had imaging ordered by a nurse. 
So for the length of stay analysis, uh, analysis um, for result, uh, the mean difference in patient's length of stay in urgent care between the patients who had x-rays ordered by the nurse versus a healthcare provider, it was 21 minutes. And uh, to dig even deeper, the average patient length of stay when ordered by a nurse, in, uh, by the when imaging was ordered by a nurse, that was 75 minutes. Whereas when uh, a healthcare provider ordered the imaging, that was 96 minutes. So the conducted T-test gives a statistical significance that uh, the patient's length of stay differs across the two groups. So we're 95% certain that the patient's length of stay on average is ranging anywhere from 3.9 to 39 uh, 38.8 minutes longer when x-ray was ordered by a healthcare provider rather than a nurse. So for the nurse satisfaction uh, survey, at least 11 out of the, of the 13 nurses completed their survey. So we got a pretty good outcome of that. Um, at least uh, for question one, uh, it shows that at least nine nurses agreed or strongly agreed that the educational session prepared them for use. Uh, for question two, eight nurses agreed or strongly agreed that the protocols were easy to use and follow. Um, in question three, seven nurses agreed or strongly agreed that they feel confident using the NIPS. In question four, displayed that six nurses agreed or strongly agreed that with the addition of the NIPS, they feel more empowered as a nurse in the practice. Although five nurses uh, were uh, either neither agreed nor disagreed about that, they were neutral. And for question five, eight nurses agreed or strongly agreed that the protocols are beneficial to patients, families, and organization. So for healthcare provider satisfaction, uh, there were at least a total of 43 healthcare providers who uh, were coming back and forth in that urgent care setting. And we got at least eight uh, providers who completed the survey. Uh, so eight out of the 43. So for question one, at least six healthcare providers agreed or strongly agreed that the nurses followed the protocols accurately, while, there's, while there was one healthcare provider who strongly disagreed on that. And um, five healthcare providers agreed or strongly agreed that it is beneficial for nurses to order uh, imaging prior to their assessment, while two strongly disagreed for question two. In question three, at least six healthcare providers agreed or strongly agreed that the protocol saved time for them and the patient, whereas two strongly disagreed or disagreed. And for question four, six healthcare providers agreed or strongly agreed that the protocols are beneficial to patients, families, and the organizations. So, Overall, we can conclude that at least six nurses are able to use the NIPS accurately. Uh, there were 50 missed opportunities where nurses could have ordered an x-ray, but they didn't. Uh, so of the 170 patients, uh, nurses missed at least 29.4% of the patients. But however, only one x-ray was ordered inappropriately out of the 170 patients without any clear documentation of whether uh, the patient fit the protocol or not. But however, this is important to this is important because it shows that nurses did not order x-rays when they shouldn't. So although missed opportunities are important to document and show there could be improvement in this area, it is more important to discover that nurses aren't ordering x-rays when they shouldn't because it would expose patients to unnecessary radiation. And the data analysis also demonstrated a positive impact on patients' length of stay in urgent care. Patients uh, had a reduced length of stay when an x-ray was ordered by a nurse upon arrival to urgent care instead of those who had to wait for a healthcare provider assessment before getting the x-ray. And this is a significant finding just because organizations should really strive to decrease patients' length of stay due to the negative impact of, patient, of long patient wait times. And uh, overall, the nurse satisfaction was positive. Uh, most nurses stated they felt confident using the protocol. Um, and however, one nurse did strongly disagree that he uh, or she felt confident in using the protocol. So it is vital that every nurse is comfortable and confident in using the NIPS. So we would strive for that to be 100% if we can. Um, a reassuring finding, though, did show that 
the use of the NIPS had a positive impact on nurses' sense of empowerment. And most of the nurses reported that the NIPS did brought benefits to patients, families, and the organization. And over, overall, the results of the healthcare provider survey were mostly positive findings. Um, most of the healthcare providers uh, reported that the nurses used the protocols accurately, felt it was beneficial for the nurses to order x-rays prior to their assessment. And they reported that protocols saved time for patients' families um, and felt the protocols were beneficial to patients' families and the organizations as well. So our plan for sustainability of this uh, NIP to be used over uh, in the long run at this clinical setting is all based on leadership. Uh, nurse managers, directors, and site leads, they really need to encourage and expect these protocols to be used. And uh, we really need uh, the support of stakeholders. And our biggest stakeholders are nurses. And the sustainability of the ankle and foot nibs depends on the nurse's confidence and initiate, initiated effort into using them. And we suggest that um, to further sustain this, uh, more, more time and exposure of the nibs are needed uh, before full benefits of the project are realized. Um, and follow-up can be done through, you know, just giving feedback at the staff meeting, uh, just providing for the education, uh, nurse education, just to really build that confidence and comfort level, level in using the NIPS. And uh, yeah, getting good uh, further feedback from providers as well, and just discussing on how to improve them at uh, provider meetings can help to sustain this project. And lastly, uh, we think having nurse champions uh, will further sustain this uh, project. Uh, we thought that maybe assigning at least one or two nurse champions to be expert in the protocol to help other staff and uh, train new staff as well will really help benefit. So in conclusion, um, NIPs are commonly used in the emergency departments, but they have not been utilized in urgent care. And so uh, urgent care settings are becoming uh, the new mainstream sites, uh, visits for patients to seek quick medical treatment, uh, patient volumes and urgent care are increasing due to decreased costs compared to emergency department and the desire for a rapid care and treatment. Urgent care settings are transforming themselves to perform more functions ever than before. And really the goal of this project was to implement NIPS in, in urgent care settings just because it's really never been done before. So overall, uh, throughout this whole project, the results of the study were positive. So that's the end of our, my presentation. Are there any questions or any comments at all? Thank you for sharing your information. I appreciated it. Yeah. Hi, Dur. I was wondering, has there been any discussion about um, implementing it in other urgent cares across the health system? Yeah, so we're part of the, uh, where we're at is part of the Alina Health System. We did talk about that. We did say that, you know, over time, that that's, that's the ideal plan. That's what they really want to do. Uh, but at this point, in order to do it, we kind of want them to educate staff members and really talk to providers too, to really push for it. So we talked about it, but at this point, I think the managers and the nurse supervisors has they have to really talk about it to see if they really want to implement this. Because while we were doing this project, there was a lot of other projects and other improvement, yeah, other improvement quality projects going on too. So ours was like at the end of the spectrum and for them to use it. So again, if I don't know if they really want to do another trial, but uh, after we presented this to them, they actually really, they wanted to do it. But again, it's all based on the perfect timing to do it. So it's in the talks. I was wondering, um, nice work, but I was wondering what you would do differently. What'd you learn during this process and what might you do differently um, if you did, had to do this over or to do it again? Yeah, you know, I had, it was certainly very overwhelming just because um, I have no experience in urgent care at all. This was actually my uh, partner's, Ali's work site. So, uh, yeah, going in, I didn't have any clue on how uh, they manage their work style over there. But I think that if I can do it again, I think I will stress on education, just uh, providing more education, just talking about it, just 
following up because we only did one education session. So I think if we were to uh, talk you know, edu tell them more about this and just really emphasize the importance of this, I think um, it would basically change the results of our study. But yeah, one good thing is that uh, we, uh, we got, we submitted our manuscript to the Journal of Urgent Care Medicine and uh, we just got a reply back that they're willing to publish it. So uh, that's a good news there. <laughs> so we won't, uh, they, they're planning to publish it in uh, the, their October uh, article. So that's wow. exciting. <laughs> Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. What is your next project now that you're experienced at this? You know, at this point, I think uh, I'm almost done with uh, the program, just like a few more weeks and we'll be done. So I think I don't have any projects in line right now. I think I just kind of want to focus on finishing school and just uh, passing the test first. And then I guess once I jump into uh, a workplace, I mean, definitely I'll start looking for potential projects there just cause you know, my experience with the DNP project, it's been so, it's been fun and it's been very interesting. And you know, there's a lot of quality improvement projects that, that's needed out there. So, you know, I really have no idea at this point. But yeah, I'd like to thank all you guys again for uh, coming in. It's been awesome, so. Thank you.